everyone, all of my lovely 340 students. This is the recorded lecture for March 28th. Unfortunately, I will be out of town. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep the momentum of the class going and we're going to continue right where we left off. So uh, if you recall on the Monday before the midterm, we were talking about type equivalence. So specifically here, we're talking about uh, in a type system, how can the type system tell if two types are the same, right? So we've looked at various types of type systems. We looked at type uh, name equivalence, which specifies that for two types to be equivalent, they must have exactly the same name, right? So if we define a new type, even if that type is the same as a basic type, that because that new type no longer has the same name as the basic type, right, that that is not uh, name equivalent. And we saw an interesting case of what happens when you have anonymous types, right? So anonymous type is a type with no name. So in that case, even two variables with the same anonymous type will not be name equivalent because there is no name, right? They cannot be name equivalent because they anonymous types do not have a name. So we said, okay, this is probably a little bit too restrictive. So what can we do? So how can we improve this? So in the next step of the evolution, we then looked at internal name equivalence. So we looked at two things can be equivalent if the compiler would give them the same internal name, right? And this comes up specifically with anonymous types and specifically with multiple variables that are declared to have the same anonymous type. So those types are uh, type equivalent. And then on Monday, we continued looking forward and we said, well, but you know, these rules are very restrictive, right? So what if we try to give the programmer more expressivity, right? Then how can they, t how can the type system tell if two types are equivalent based on really the underlying structure of the data type? So for instance, if one type is an int and the other type is also an int but different names, we maybe still want that to be the same. Uh, but we have to look at what happens, how do we deal with structures and pointers and um, structures and pointers and functions, right? How do we determine the type equivalence of them? So this brings us to today. So we've been talking about, on Monday, we've talked about t uh, structural equivalence, right? So we've looked at, we want to look at these two structures, A and B, and determine that A and B are both the same, right? So we're defining a new, structure A and a new structure B. We define two new variables, foo and bar, that have the type A and B. And we want to answer the question, is foo and bar the same thing? Right? And so this is where we get into the structural equivalence rules of determining that, right? So we went through the rules for the basic types. So basic types are structurally equivalent if they're the same. Pointers to basic t uh, pointers are the same if the types that they're pointing to are the same. Structures, as we saw, remember we talked on Monday that structures can be structurally equivalent uh, if and only if the types in the order are the same. So the key here is that, as we can see here, we have the, the structure field names. Here are x1, x2, all the way to xk. Here in structure 2 is y1, y2, all the way to yk. But we're ignoring, to tell if two structures are structurally equivalent, we ignore the name of the field and we just want to look at the types. So we say, is the type, are the types of the first field structurally equivalent? W1 structurally equivalent to WQ1. And we do this for W2 structurally equivalent to Q2. And we keep going through all of them until all the way to the end. So this condition must hold. For two structures to be structurally equivalent, this must hold. So we saw that and so we saw that here we have a structure A with field A int followed by field B float. Here's structure B followed by B, a field B which is an int, and field A which is a float. And so if we have two structures, foo which is type A, bar which is type B, and we want to ask the question is foo equal to bar, uh, under structural equivalence, these are structurally equivalent because the first two types, uh, the first two fields are structurally equivalent, and the second two fields are also structurally equivalent. So the important thing here is that the name doesn't matter. And so similarly, if we have the same thing, st struct A and struct B, where A has a field int, B has a field float, and struct B where B has a field float, uh, 
uh, where the first one, the field name is B, which is a float, and the second structure field name is an A, which type is an int. And here, even though we can see A int, A int, B float, B float, right, the order in structural equivalence is what matters. So foo and bar here would not be structurally equivalent. And we can just quickly update this. See, these are how problems get fixed. Awesome. So we also saw that two arrays, if we want to determine if two arrays can be structurally equivalent. So if we have two arrays, remember, and in this kind of fake type system that we're defining, right, we say that arrays have a certain range. So T1 has an array of range 1 of some type T1. T2 are arrays of some range 2 of type T2. And so we say that T1 and T2 are structurally equivalent if and only if the ranges are the same number of dimensions and the same number of entries. So essentially the ranges are identical and T1 and T2 are structurally equivalent, right? It seems pretty straightforward. And we saw that two functions are structurally equivalent if they have the same number of parameters and all of those parameters are structurally equivalent, right? So in order, so the first parameters are structurally equivalent, the types of the first parameters, the types of the second parameters are structurally equivalent, the types of the third parameters are structurally equivalent, all the way to the end of the very last type are structurally equivalent, and finally also the return values are structurally equivalent. So now we get to today's topic is how do we actually determine, what's the algorithm for determining if types are structurally equivalent? And so the goal is to determine, we want to be able to try to understand for every pair of types in the program, are they structurally equivalent? Right? And we want to be able to calculate this because we want to be able to answer the question, hey, are these two types structurally equivalent? Does the type system allow this assignment operator because these two types are, are structurally equivalent? So the outcome of our algorithm, we want to know for every type in the program with every other type if they're structurally equivalent. So when you see something like this, we want to see for every pair of types, we want to think a table, right? We want to make a two-dimensional table to try to understand the structural equivalence of the types. And so it, in a naive way, how you may do this is fairly simple. So we saw for all the rules, they are all recursive rules, right? So in functions, as we just saw, functions are structurally equivalent if the types of the function parameters are structurally equivalent. Um, arrays or pointers are structurally equivalent if they point if what they point to are structurally equivalent. And so it seems really straightforward, right? We should be able to just keep applying these five rules over and over until we get to our base case of one and two, right? So the base case of types being equal and the other base case. So let's look at one and two here, right? So one are same built-in types. And actually, so one is actually the base case, right? Uh, pointers are structurally equivalent types. So I will update this. All right, one is our base case. Great. But we run into a problem. So let's let's look at what would happen. So right. So let's say we have over here. So from this example. We have some type T1, and T1 is, we're defining as a struct, right, where the first field, we'll call it A, is an int, right, and the second field P is a pointer to T2, and here we have T2 or this is a struct where we have a is an int and p is a pointer to t1 right okay so once we get here right so the question is how do we determine so let's apply our rules to determine if these are structurally equivalent, right? So we want to ask, 
We want to ask the question, are T1 and T2 structurally equivalent? Right? So, we know from rule three, right, that T1 and T2 are, so just keep applying these rules, right? So T1 and T2 are structurally equivalent if the first fields are structurally equivalent. So, so to satisfy this first one, W1 is structurally equivalent to Q1. So the first field type is in T1 is the same as the first field type in T2. So the first field type in T1 is an int. The first field type in T2 is also an int. So we say R2 int, int structurally equivalent. Yes, so this is structurally equivalent. So this condition passes. And then here we have are the second parameter structurally equivalent, pointer to T2, pointer to T1. So now we want to ask the question, right? So applying these rules here forces us to ask the question, are these two types this equivalent, right? Or structurally equivalent? So is pointer to T2, is that equivalent to pointer to T1, right? So that's the question that we want to answer. So, okay, let's look at our pointer rule, right? We have our pointer rule is number two. So pointer to T2, pointer to T1, pointers are pointers are structurally equivalent if what they point to is structurally equivalent, right? Oops, I just hit some button here that I don't know what it was. That's fine. Right? So these are structurally equivalent, pointer to T2 to pointer to T1, if what they point to are structurally equivalent, right? So we say is T2 structurally equivalent to T1? Right? Well, how do we do that? Well, let's go back here. So we say, okay, they're structurally equivalent if they're structures. So we know the rules for structural equivalents are, can I, there we go, found the button. Okay. Right? So then we go back to our rule for structural equivalents and we say, okay, how do we determine these two structures are equivalent? Well, if the first two fields are equivalent, int and int, then they're structurally equivalent. Great. Those are good. And then we check pointer to T2, pointer to T1. Our pointer to T2, pointer to T1, right? Pointer to T2. Is that structurally equivalent to, right? Pointer to T1. Well, these are going to be structurally equivalent if and only if these are structurally equivalent. So then we go, is T2 structurally equivalent to T1? And hopefully at this point, you're screaming at your computer, please, Adam, stop doing this. You're going to keep going forever, right? We can see we've already reached this point, and so we're going to keep looping here, trying to determine if these structures are structurally equivalent, right? So how can we fix this, right? So when we apply these rules, we're saying that, well, T2 is structurally equivalent to T. T1 is structurally equivalent to T2 if and only if pointer to T1 is structurally equivalent to pointer to T2, which is true if and only if T1 is structurally equivalent to T2, dot, 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 on and on again forever, right? So now we kind of reach a conundrum. So are these two structures structurally equivalent? And this is actually something I want you to kind of maybe, you can pause the video for a little bit and think, hmm. Intuitively, should these two structures be structurally equivalent, right? could you use in place of T1, right, where your program's expecting a T1, could you give it a T2 and have that execute the same, right? So think about it like this. So I have those two types. And now here in my program, I'm declaring a variable of type T1 called foo, right? I do stuff with foo. Then later on, I'm declaring a variable of type T2 called bar, right? And now I want to say, well, I want to use, right, I want to copy foo into bar. So can I do that? Or to put another way, let's say I have some function, um, right, baz. And let's say baz takes in an argument of type t2, right? It's written to take in, uh, and I'm going to call it a because I'm running out of variable names it takes in something of type T2, so it knows it can do T2 dot uh, A dot A to get an int, right? So let's set this to be 42, and we'll have A dot 
P, right, which is a pointer to a T1. And let's say I want to get the integer after that. So I know it's a pointer, so I'm going to need to, if I'm writing kind of C pseudocode, right, I'm going to need the arrow operator here. So A dot P arrow A, right? So I'm going to set that equal to 100. So the question is, so clearly I can call Baz with bar, right? We can see bar is of type T2. The function Baz accepts parameters of type T2. Clearly I should be able to do this, right? But the question is, can I call Baz with foo, right? Is this a valid call? Can I every place in this function, right, that I use T2, could I use a T1 interchangeably? Well, it should be clear from where we were trying to calculate this that yes, we have an A structure. The A field is the first field here, so clearly I can use that here. That's going to be an integer. That's not going to be a problem, right? And the other thing is, so it has a P field, right, which is going to be a pointer to here in T1 to T2. So I can dereference that pointer and then access the A field and set that to be equal to 100. So really, I can use a T1 here when I was expecting a T2, right? Because the pointers here are pointing two types. So it's kind of almost as you can see, we get into this infinite recursive thing. Well, T1 and T2 are structure equivalent, right? If the pointers to T2 and the pointers to T1 are structure equivalent, and those are only going to be structure equivalent if and only if T2 and T1 are structure equivalent, which is the whole question that we're trying to resolve in the first place. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, what if we assume that T1 and T2 are structurally equivalent, right? Then pointers to T1 and pointers to T2 is fine because T1 and T2 are structurally equivalent, right? So that's how we're going to do this, and that's how we're actually going to break this log jam that we get in, is we're going to assume from the start that T1 and T2 are structurally equivalent, right? Because when we start, we know nothing about the types, so we just assume that all the types are structurally equivalent, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through and try to prove that types are not structurally equivalent because they don't follow the rules, right? So you can see how the alternative, our previous way that we were thinking about this is, well, we first assume that, you know, this doesn't say that there's an assumption necessarily in here, but there is, right? There's an assumption here that the types are, all types are not structurally equivalent, and we need to apply our rules to prove that they are structurally equivalent. Well, an alternative way of thinking about that, right, is, well, why don't we do this from the other way? Assume that all the types are not structurally equivalent, or, sorry, assume that all the types are structurally equivalent, and if any type violates one of those rules, then we say that it is not structurally equivalent, right? So you can see that we're trying to get to these, get to the actual rules, the actual structural equivalent from two different directions either assuming that they're all the same or assuming that none of them are the same and we're going to use those rules to work towards the actual type system. Ooh. Sorry, the actual structural equivalence. So, like I mentioned, right, our goal is to create an n by n table where n is the number of types in the program and we want each entry in the table is going to be true if the types are structurally equivalent or false if the types are not structurally equivalent. And so, in order to support this cyclical definitions, right, this is why we're going to do it this way, is we're going to assume that all, everything is structurally equivalent. So, we're going to create our table, and we're going to set every element in that table to be true. And so, the way to think about this is, right, we're, we know nothing. Before we approach this types, we know nothing. We either have to assume that they're all the same, or they're all different, right? So, we're going to assume that they're all the same, until we have proof otherwise because they contradict one of the rules. And so once we have this, once we start here, so this is this key idea is starting here, then the algorithm itself is fairly simple. So we first set 
the end by end table to have each entry as true. And while the table has not changed, so this should be very sim similar, uh, sorry, this should be very um, familiar to you, right? What Think about what other algorithms we've talked about that we keep executing and going until nothing has changed, right? So hopefully right in your head popped in, oh, yes, first and follow sets, right? When we calculated first and follow sets, we did those until the table, until our first and follow sets had not changed. Right? And I think at the time I mentioned that this is a, a technique called a fixed point. So we're continually applying an algorithm until nothing changes. Uh, the mathematical term for that is a fixed point. So this structural equivalence algorithm is the same. So we're going to keep applying these rules un uh, until we haven't changed anything. So you can see this kind of pseudocode, right? So while the table has not changed, check each entry i and j in the table, so each pair of types, right? And if t i and t j are not structurally equivalent, so you check using the rules, the structural equivalent of the two types, then you set the entry in the table to be false, right? And so t i and t j are the i and j types in the programs, right? It doesn't really matter what you name them as. So let's go through an example using that log jam example that we had, right? So here we have a structure. Uh, T1 is a structure. It has a field A as an int, B, a field P, which is a pointer to T2. T2 is a structure which has a field C, which is an int, and a field Q, which is a pointer to T3. And T3 is a structure that has A, the first field is a float, and the second field P is a pointer to T1. Right, and so the question is, are these structurally equivalent? And so hopefully by looking at this, you can see it's actually not clear right away what the answer is going to be, right? And you can imagine if there's more types, it's going to be even more confusing. So this is why we have this algorithm to calculate this. So we're first going to create our table, right? And what's n in this case? n is the number of types in the program. So we have three types. So we're going to have a three by three table. And we're going to write each of the types, right? T1, T2, T3 along the top here, and T1, T2, T3 along the side here. And remember, the first step of the structural equivalence algorithm, we're going to assume that everything is true, that every type is true, is structurally equivalent. And then what we want to do, right, we're going to go through each of these types, T1, 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 T2, T1, T3, and see are they actually structurally equivalent? Right? And so this is what we're going to do. We're going to say, are T1 and T1 structurally equivalent? Well, yes, they're the exact same type. They are definitely structurally equivalent. Right? Um, that's one way to do it. We can actually go through this, right, and say, well, an int is structurally equivalent to an int. Uh, pointer to T2, is that structurally equivalent to pointer to T2? Well, pointer to T2 is structurally equivalent to pointer to T2 if T2 and T2 are structurally equivalent. So how do we determine if T2 and T2 are structurally equivalent? We look at our table and we see T2, T2, yes, that's true, yes, at this point they're structurally equivalent. So we say yes, T1 is structurally equivalent to T1. Then we go on to something more interesting. We say are T1 and T2 structurally equivalent? Right. So we look here and we say, okay, well, they're both structures. So we know that two structures are structurally equivalent if and only if the first field types are structurally equivalent. So is an int structurally equivalent to an int? Yes, that's rule one. Those are structurally equivalent. Then we say, let's look at the next field. Are they equivalent? Well, we have pointer to T2 and pointer to T3. So we know from rule two that pointers are structurally equivalent if and only if the types that they point to are structurally equivalent. So we say, is T2 structurally equivalent to T3? Now. This is the very important thing, right? Just like when we're calculating first and follow, we always refer to the previously calculated value of T2 and T3, right? We don't go through and try to recalculate new values for T2 and T3, or try to determine if T2 and T3 are structurally equivalent. We have this beautiful table that we're building about the structural equivalent of all the types in the program. So we look up in the table the types. So we say, is T2 structurally equivalent to T3? And we say yes, right? We say the f the entry here is true, which means at this point, T2 and T3 are structurally 
Excuse me. T2 and T3 are structurally equivalent. And then we say, okay, great. That means T1 and T2 are structurally equivalent. Right? So we check these fields, check these fields, check those, and say, great, they are structurally equivalent. So now we move on to T1 and T3. So we first look right at the first fields, int and float. Are ints and floats structurally equivalent? Eh, they are not structurally equivalent. So then we change this entry to be false. So you can think of it as we've essentially at this point proved to ourselves that T1 and T3 are not possibly structurally equivalent, right? Because that first structure field is not structurally equivalent. Now, the other thing that we have to keep in mind, right, is we really only care about half of this table, right? Because uh, structural equivalence is, I cannot remember the term for it right now. If we were in class, one of you could definitely help me out. Um, I want to say commutative or associative. Um, so if T1 is not structurally equivalent to T3, then T3, uh, then T3 is not going to be structurally equivalent to T1. So we need to make sure to update in our table the reflective one, right? Just to make sure that we have that. Great. So we did all T1 against all the other types. So now we're going to do T2 against all the other types, right? But once again, we're not going to start with T1, T2, uh, T2, T1, because we've already calculated that. So, and you can kind of see, uh, hopefully you can convince yourself that along the diagonal here, right, is always going to be true because a type is always going to be structurally equivalent to itself. So the only other one to check here is, is T2 structurally equivalent to T3? So then we look, is the first field, their structures, is the first field in T2 equivalent to the T3? So I have an int and a float. So it tells me that nope, eh, they are not structurally equivalent. And I have to update in my table T3, T2. So now I've gone through all the pairs. I've gone through T1 against T2, T3, T2 against T3, right? So I've compared all the pairs. And now I say, well, am I done? Have I, I've gone through all of them. Have I calculated? Have I properly calculated all the structural equivalents here? Remember, and just like first and follow sets, the answer is no, because we, we went through, applied all the rules, and we made changes to this table. So we have to make sure we go through again and calculate, apply the rules again. So we do exactly what we did. So let's check T1 and T2 and say, are these structurally equivalent? So let's look at our types, T1 and T2. So we have T1, which is an int. T2's first field type is an int as well. So we say those two are structurally equivalent, great. So now we check the other one, pointer to T2, pointer to T3. Well, we know, okay, good, they're both pointers, and pointers are gonna be structurally equivalent if and only if T2 is structurally equivalent to T3. Now we look up in our field, is T2 structurally equivalent to T3? Eh, false, it is not, which means T1 is not structurally equivalent to T2. So that's gonna be false, so we update that in our table. And then we'd go and check T1, T3, and we'd see T1, T3, those are definitely still not structurally equivalent. We'd check T2, T3, and say yes, these are not structurally equivalent. We'd say, ah, I made changes, I have to do it again, so we'd go through it one more time, and if you go through it, you will get this exact same table. Right. And so we can see here now that this example shows how we can calculate that. So. Let's do a few more examples of this. All right. So let's say we have types. Let's say T1 is a string. Uh, T2 is going to be a pointer to T1. and T3 is going to be a pointer to a string. Right, so just like before. So, and then let's clear some variables. So here I have my types. And then I have my variables. 
So let's say I have x and y are both of type x. Let's see, x is type t2, right? y and z are both types of pointers. Oop, pointers is not a type, it's pointer to string. Right, okay, so now I want to say, so what are, what types are structurally equivalent? Right, so that's one way to think about this. What types are structurally equivalent? The other way to think about it is, can I do this? Oh, let's, uh, I'm going to declare another variable w that's type t3. Right, so can I do x equals w under, let's say, structure, uh, name equivalence? Right? Can I do this under name equivalence? Under internal name, uh, mm, internal name equivalence? Structural. Right? This is something that definitely you could get asked on a midterm. Right? So this demonstrates that you understand how to apply these type equivalence rules. So you think about what actually is this question asking, right? So what this question is asking is the type of x is t2, the type of w is t3, so it's asking all of these questions assuming name equivalence is t2 name equivalent to t3, right? So it should be very clear, is t2 the same name as t3? No, not equivalent. Are they e internal name equivalent? Right? No, they're declared as different types. They are not internal name equivalent either. Are they structurally equivalent? This is when we need to create our table. But before we do, we have to, let's look at maybe another question that they could ask us, right? Or I guess when I say they, I kind of mean me. So let's have y equal w. Right, can I do that? So name internal structural. Right, so Y and Z name equivalent. So the name of type so right, when we think about Y is W, remember we're talking about the types. So W's type is T three. But what's Y's type? So hopefully you can realize at this point that the type of Y right here, right, this has no name. There is no pointer to a string type. Uh, this is not a name. So it's an anonymous type. So when we say, are they name equivalent? No, they have no name. They are not name equivalent. Are they internal name equivalent? No, right? This is declared here. This is declared here. So internally they're going to have different names. So no, they're not an internal name equivalent. Finally, are they structurally equivalent? So what this means is looking at the types here, right? Let's see, can I move this to get more? No, it's just going to zoom. Okay, that's fine. Although now I have a mouse, so now I can do stuff like move things down. Okay. So fancy. Right, so now I can move this down. Sweet. But now I want to remember I want to be able to answer this question. So, how do I determine if these are structurally equivalent? Well, remember, as we said, to determine structural equivalence, you have to put all of the types in your type system, in your program. You have to put them in this table. Right, so the types in the program are T1, T2, T3 and this anonymous type here. So let's give it a name. We're going to call it, let's call it alpha, because it's one of the Greek letters that I can draw. So we'll call this alpha, and alpha is going to be this type here. So we have four types in this program that we want to determine the type, the structural equivalence.
right? So let's build a table. We'll do T1, T2, T3, and alpha along the top, and then we will tax my straight line drawing abilities. Oh, nah, not so bad if I do say so myself. All right, and then we'll need another line here. And then we also put these same types along the line here, T1, right, T2, T3, and the alpha. All right, great, here's our table. Now, remember, what are we assuming about all the types in the program when we compute structural equivalents? We are assuming that everything in this is structural equivalent. Everything is structural equivalent to everything else. All right, so you can see here I'm, I'm only drawing the upper half here, so that should be very clear about why I'm doing that. Now, then we want to go through and say, and I'm going to write alpha up here Right? So alpha doesn't have an explicit name, but the usage of the program is as if alpha is pointer to string. Right? Okay, so I'm going to look at T1 and T2. So I go through, so I've set them all to be true. They're all structurally equivalent, and I'm going to go through for T1 through all the other ones and say, are they structurally equivalent and prove it from the rule. Ask if any of the rules contradict this statement. So I have T1, and I'm going to go to T2, and I'm going to say, is a string structure equivalent to a pointer to T1? No, that is false. Right? Strings are not the same thing as pointers, and I just got rid of oh, my beautiful line. There we go. Awesome. Even better line. Right. So this is false. They are not structure equivalent. Then I go T1, T3. Is T1 structure equivalent to T2, string and a pointer to a string? No, pointers and strings cannot be structure equivalent, so that's false. T1 and alpha, alpha is a pointer to a string, T1 is a string, nope, cannot be structure equivalent. Right? Great. T2, T3, T2 pointer to T1, T3 pointer to string. Okay, they're both pointers, so they're structure equivalent if and only if the types that they're pointing to are structure equivalent. So is T1 structure equivalent to a string? So we see T1. And we see T1 and string. So T1 and string, so T1 string is a basic type and T1 is a basic type string. So we use rule one to say yes, those are structure equivalent. So we say then T2 and T3 are structure equivalent based on what we know. And we say T2 and alpha. T2 is pointer to T1. Alpha is pointer to string. We do pointers are the same. String and T1. So string is a string. T1 is a string. We compare string and string. Those are structure equivalent. So we say yes, T2 and alpha are structure equivalent. We look at T3. We say T3 and alpha, are they structure equivalent? Well, pointer to string, they're, they're both pointers. They're going to be the same if what they point to is the same. So string, structurally equivalent to string, means that yes, these are structurally equivalent. Then I change something in this table, so I have to go through it again. So T1, T2, still not structurally equivalent. T1, T3, still not structurally equivalent. And this should be very clear why, right? This is a string, and these are all pointers. There's no way these can be structurally equivalent. So it's going to be false all here, T2, T3. T1 and string are still the same, so T2 and T3 are still structurally equivalent. T2 and alpha are both point, T2 is a pointer to T1, alpha is a pointer to a string. These are still structurally equivalent, so these are structurally equivalent. T3, T alpha, pointer to string, pointer to string, both structurally equivalent, bang. So here I have all of the structural equivalents in the program. Right? So now when I say, are T2 and T3 structurally equivalent, I don't even need to think about it. Right? I've already calculated it. So T2 and T3 are in this table. We look T2, T3, yes, structurally equivalent. We would write yes, and we would get all the points in the world here, and we would be very happy students. And I would be a happy instructor. Okay. Now in this other problem, remember, we're asking, can Y equal the W? 
So the type of Y, remember, is alpha, and the type which we gave the internal name alpha. The type of W is T3. So we ask, are they structurally equivalent? Alpha, well, T3, alpha, true. So yes, they are structurally equivalent. Also, very good, right, correct answer. Awesome. So just for, so let's ask one more question here. So now that you've computed this, now you can answer pretty much any question about assignment operators or an equivalence, right? So is y equals z allowed under name equivalence? So I want you to think about that. Right? So what's the type of z? Right? Well, remember, we gave it the name alpha, but it is an anonymous type. Z has no name. So Z has no name, and Y has no name. And if you have two types that have no name, they are not name equivalent. So they are not going to be name equivalent. Are they internal name equivalent? So we look at Y and Z. We see Y and Z are both pointers to string, but they're the same pointer anonymous type pointer to string. So we know that internally the compiler is going to have to give them the same type name alpha and so we'll say that yes they are internal name equivalent then structural equivalence well we can look in our table and we know alpha and alpha is always going to be structural equivalent so we say yes and then we are happy happy students cool all right so that is it we've reached the end of the type system for right now, um, there'll be obviously homeworks on this to help reinforce the concepts. And on Wednesday, we're going to talk about something very, very interesting. We're going to go over Hindley Milner type inference. So, this is a really important, very cool topic that I'm very excited uh, to start talking about on Wednesday. So, thank you, and I will see you then.